Computer games are notoriously difficult to actually create. They're one of the hardest things to do in computer programming. Because of that, I'm going to help you build what's called a game engine through a series of step-by-step -step instructions that will allow you to create almost any type of two-dimensional game. Firstly, you don't need to create a game engine in order to create a game. There's another one of my videos that explains how to create Pong in just 17-18 minutes. That does not use a game engine. It just draws some graphics to the screen, puts some collision detection in, and you have a game. Essentially, all games have the same issues and requirements. You need to be able to see things on the screen, you need to be able to move things about, you need to have collision detection, and have some sort of ultimate goal. Because of this, building a game engine is probably one of the most flexible ways that we can create any type of game using, and it allows me to take you through a series of step-by-step -step instructions to create something. Now this video, or this series of videos, is not going to assume that you've had no programming experience. If there's any concepts or anything that I discussed that you are unfamiliar with, there should be a theoretical video amongst all my other videos to help try and explain that, that concept. But for the moment, I'm going to explain why we're going to have a game engine to power our games with. A two-dimensional game is any game which has either a top-down view or a side view. It will use graphics that are not built from 3D polygons. Now the game engine we're going to create through these videos is actually what's called a 2.5D engine, two and a half dimensions. It's not strictly a two-dimensional engine because there are going to be some uh, depth elements added to the engine itself so it can understand how far deep into the screen or close to the camera items actually are. The reason for this is that here at the college I'm working at we've got a 3D projector. Now programming against a 3D projector is not actually that difficult to do and I'm going to use this game engine in such a way that we can actually create games that will be in true 3D on the 3D projector even though they are either a top-down view or a side view. If you want to have some examples of games that take these different viewpoints, think about things like um, Zelda on the Game Boy, or Game Boy Color or DS. Um, Pokemon is a good example. Um, almost all Amiga games and games from the 1990s are based on a two-dimensional model, simply because the computers at the time weren't powerful enough to actually run those type of games. Side view, you've got things like Angry Birds, uh, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter 2, those sorts of games which nowadays will have a pseudo 3D element, this sort of fake version of 3D, but are actually two-dimensional games. So how are we going to build this 3D engine, or this 2D engine, sorry, get my words right. Well, to do this, what we're going to do is create, first of all, a game world. Now this world actually encapsulates everything we're going to need from our engine. It's going to have a background. This can be either stationary or it could be animated. There'll be elements of scenery on this background. One of the reasons for this will become more apparent later on as we go through some of the game examples. Uh, imagine in Pokemon where you start going through long grass and then you actually see the grass over the top of your player instead of seeing the player's legs. That's actually a scenery item that's being drawn in to on top of the person's character and that's another area where depth has to come into this two-dimensional engine. On top of this scenery we're going to have objects. Obviously the player is an object, enemies are objects, pickups are objects, but so are walls and other items that you might want to have in amongst your environment. As well as this, we are going to have to have a view into the game world. And to do this, we're going to have what's called a camera object. Now, a camera object is probably the most complicated part of this entire game world, and explaining and understanding this is going to be key to understanding the game engine. Your game world will be on a two-dimensional grid with a bit of depth information in as well. So you can imagine it as having the coordinates starting at the top left-hand corner, going all the way over and all the way down to a maximum value. Your game world could be as big or as small as you want it to be. It could be just one screen in size. It could be 100,000 screens in size. At this stage, it doesn't really matter. Every object 
and every piece of scenery will have a series of coordinates that say whereabouts in this game world that they are. The camera will also have a series of coordinates to say where to start the camera drawing from. And it is this camera that you will see on your screen. Now a camera will have a resolution, a number of pixels across and down that it can show. This does not actually affect how it draws on the screen. No matter what resolution the screen is at, the camera resolution is going to be fixed within your game. You may have more than one resolution, but for the sake of argument, we're going to talk about just one resolution, say 640 pixels by 480 pixels. Now you are watching a video that I'm recording on a flip video camera. This camera has a resolution. It has 640 by 480 pixels in size, just like I just described. Now you might be watching it full screen blown up on YouTube on a high definition display. That doesn't change the number of pixels that were made from the camera and recording the video. All it does is it stretches those pixels to fit the size of the screen that you've got. Our game engine is going to do the same thing. If I was to have a higher definition flip video camera, you'd actually be able to see more of what is around me to the sides and to the top and bottom. That would be the same on your game camera. If you increase the resolution, you'll just see more detail. If you keep the resolution the same but stretch it, you just see things blown up. The game world is very similar to this room I'm in at the moment. I'm in a classroom and there are elements to my right, elements to my left that you cannot see. If I start moving the camera, which is something you'll be able to do in your game, and hopefully try and move it back to face me, that's a bit low isn't it? There we go. You'll be able to move your camera in your game world just the same as I can move a, a physical camera. And that will allow you to track a certain object, which will be your player, for example, or allow you to have maybe two or more cameras in amongst the game world. So you could have two players on the same computer at the same time, or maybe even four, like Gauntlet on the old Atari. Another benefit of having these cameras is we're not going to have just one type of camera, but three. We're going to have a normal two-dimensional camera, a left eye camera, and a right eye camera. Now what the left eye and right eye cameras will do, will, they will use the depth information to introduce what are called offsets into the actual graphics, which will be better explained when I go through those series of steps on the actual program. This will mean if you put a left camera and a right camera next to each other, then project that onto a 3D projector and wear a pair of 3D glasses, certain elements that have a depth less than the camera depth will actually look like they're sticking out from the screen. Elements that have a depth much greater than the camera depth will look like they're going into the screen and therefore that's where we get our 3D viewpoint from. Hopefully this has been understandable to what we're actually going to create and I'm going to now take you through step by step actually creating this in C Sharp using Windows Forms.